Are you getting ready to take the Praxis Early Childhood Education exam? That is test code 5025. If that is the test that you need to pass, then good news. My name is Bob, and I'm a test prep expert with study.com, and I'm going to help you and walk you through everything that you need to know in this video. We're going to cover everything that is on the test, how best to prepare, and my top five strategy tips so that you are ready for test day. All right, let's jump in. Praxis 5025 tests whether you have the knowledge, skills, and abilities to support early child education in the following areas. One, language and literacy, which takes 30% of the exam with 36 questions. Two, mathematics at 25% of the exam with 30 questions. Three, social studies, taking up 14% of the exam with 17 questions. Four, science, which also takes 14% of the exam with 17 questions. Five, health and physical education, which combined with six, creative and performing arts, takes up 17% of the exam with a collective 20 questions. So how long is the test and how is it scored? Praxis 5025 gives two hours for the exam with 120 multiple choice questions, which the Praxis calls selected response. This gives you exactly one minute per question. Most of the multiple choice questions will have a single correct answer, but some of these multiple choice questions will have one or more correct answers. You can identify these questions by the phrase, select all that apply. There are a few other types of questions that are less common, including some with click and drag elements and some with audio or video prompts. So strategy tip number one, aim for about 50 seconds per selected response question so you have a cushion for harder questions. And strategy tip number two, skip questions if they are taking a long time. You can always come back to them later on, but you don't want to spend all your time too early. So we've covered the basics, now let's dive into some test specifics and what to expect from each of the six test categories. The first category, language and literacy, will broadly test your knowledge of how children learn how to write, read, and comprehend language. There are five subcategories here. One, emergent literacy, which tests your knowledge and application of the earliest stages of language acquisition. Two, reading, which will have dedicated sections on phonics and word analysis, as well as how different textual elements, such as pictures and characters, influence children's comprehension. Three, writing, which will ask you to identify trends and habits among early writing learners. Four, speaking and listening, a section that will test your knowledge of effective communication strategies when teaching in early learning environments. And five, language, which will examine your knowledge of conventional standard English rules and conversational conventions. When you're preparing for this section, review developmental stages in literacy and instructional strategies. You'll also need to be familiar with technical terms in language arts instruction, like decoding and phonemic awareness. The second category, mathematics, will test your knowledge of emergent mathematics, numbers, and operations as they relate to whole numbers and fractions algebraic thinking, and geometry, measurement, and data. Bear in mind that very few of these questions will present pure computational problems. Instead, they'll be posed in the context of children's learning. To prepare for this section, you'll need to know math terminology that you wouldn't normally need to know as an adult. For example, when was the last time you had to decompose a number or use a rectangular array in your real life? When you prep for this section, make sure to review math in the context of teaching math to early learners. Social studies is the third category in the exam, generally examining how well you know central concepts, skills, and tools of inquiry in the social sciences, and especially how they relate to early childhood education. In particular, you'll encounter questions on the following areas. One, identity, social, and emotional development, which tests on your knowledge of children's social and individual development. Two, Culture and cultural identity, which will ask questions about cultural perspectives, language, literature, music, and other icons as they relate to early development. Three, people, places, and environments, which includes questions relating to the relationship between human beings and their environment. Four, time, continuity, and change, which relates to the relationship between early development and historical roots. And five, civics and government which asks questions about civic participation and power structures. 
you likely won't be tested on, for example, what the three branches of American government are in the civic section. Remember that all these subjects will have something to do with how children learn in their early years and how they develop socially and emotionally, such as how they make friends. Now, you may benefit from studying recent developments in the social sciences as they apply to early learning methods. In the science section, you'll need to apply your understanding of scientific concepts, skills, and tools to early childhood education. This section will test on the following subtopics. One, the fundamental concepts and processes of scientific inquiry, which will quiz on unifying scientific concepts, such as systems and cycles, as well as basic science skills and processes. Two, physical science, which will test your knowledge of the physical world's basic phenomena like light and matter. Three, earth and space science, which deals with astronomical bodies like the earth, sun, moon, and stars. Four, life science, which deals with living organisms and natural environmental systems. And five, engineering, technology, and application of science, which examines your familiarity with problem-solving methods and scientific technology across domains. Once again, you likely won't need to know advanced scientific techniques or trivia, such as the atomic structure of hydrogen, but you will need to know, for example, the difference between a chemical and physical change or how a plant transports water. All of these are basic scientific knowledge areas that children will learn early on. Lastly, Praxis 5025 combines their health and physical education and creative and performing arts categories into one which means that you'll need to answer questions on any of the following subcategories. One, health, which will include basic questions on human physiology and consumer issues. Two, physical education, which will test on health-related fitness and motor development. Three, creative and performing arts, which might ask about the purpose of visual and performing arts education, among other things. And four, structure and processes within the arts, which will test on the terminology organizing principles, and materials with the arts. There's a lot of content here. That's why my third strategy tip is to focus on how all of these concepts I've covered apply to early childhood education. The exam won't test you on adult pedagogy theory, for example. You also won't need a calculator to figure out complicated math problems. Praxis 5025 doesn't allow calculators anyway. And my fourth strategy tip is to become familiar with common trends and pitfalls among early childhood learners in each category so you can more quickly and accurately identify effective teaching strategies in each topic. The Praxis 5025 covers the full range of early childhood education topics, so there's a lot to go over. Just because the test subject is about education for young kids, it doesn't mean adults can slack off in preparing for the exam. So what's the best way to prep? We recommend starting with a full-length practice test. Study.com's test prep course offers multiple so that you can identify where you need to spend most of your study time. Don't worry about your score the first time around. You are just trying to figure out where you need to focus. Study.com will generate a study plan with top priorities for you. If you use other test prep materials, you may need to analyze your practice results manually. Watch lessons to review the topics in your study plan and do practice problems or make flashcards to transfer the material to your long-term memory. And that brings me to strategy tip number five, practice, practice, practice. There is no substitute for working through sample questions that mirror those that you will face on test day. Every practice question that you do is going to help you be that much more prepared. Need a concrete prep recommendation? I highly recommend study.com's Praxis 5025 Early Childhood Education Prep Course. It covers everything that I just went through, but in a ton more detail. The course, written and vetted by former teachers, also includes short-form videos for every relevant concept in a bank of high-quality practice questions with answer explanations. And what's more, users who complete the course have a 92% pass rate on the test. If this video helped you, check out the other videos in this and other series for more Praxis test prep. And please, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when new teacher test prep content drops. Are there specific tests or questions that you want us to cover? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to circle back once you have passed your Praxis 5025 test so that we can all celebrate with you. Good luck.